Designed from the ground up, the D'Addario Backline Gear Transport Pack is the ultimate solution for players on the move. With more than eight specialized storage and transport compartments built right in, it makes getting everything to the gig painless and intuitive. What's up, everybody? This is Perry with Premier Guitar here in Nashville, Tennessee. Today we got uh, John Jeffers from Whiskey Myers with us, joining us from uh, East Texas, playing that guitar on the way in. How are you? Hey, man. Good. How are you? Dude, I'm 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 good. Um, this is a uh, this is one I've been looking forward to because I you know Texas country is near and dear to my heart, and you guys kind of uh, were able to break free of the bonds of that, and I think that is so cool. And you're getting national attention, and it's awesome. Um, uh, thanks, man. Yeah. yeah, and you've had a big ass year, man. You had a baby. Congratulations. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you. Had a baby in November. I mean, between that and the the, the shutdown in March, or shoot, in February. Yeah. Shut down in February. Had a baby in November. You know, all, all kinds of stuff. It's been a big year. Big year. Not to mention an ATV accident that almost cost you your hearing. <laughs> I did. Yeah, yeah. It's, Jesus. I think we, we that happened uh, three weeks before the baby. We were moving oh. into a house. Um, I had the accident. It turned into a skull fracture. They had to transfer me to a major hospital. I mean, a pretty big year. But luckily, the hearings came back for the most part. You know, I'm, I'm satisfied with how much I got now. God, thank God if you could hear what you're doing yeah. because what you do is great. So let's talk about yeah. it. Uh, um, all right. So I've always kind of in most of your music videos and, and the times I think I've seen you all live, you're kind of a Les Paul dude. Although you have some other really fun toys in the arsenal. Um, tell yeah. me about. Is this your number one? Uh, this is my number one. Yeah, this is a uh, 94 Gibson Les Paul. It's actually my uh, my first guitar that I got. Uh, Cody Tate, our other guitar player, his uncle was the uh, uh, the world's largest collector of Taylors at the time. Hmm. And he took me up there, and I was like, ah, oh, I'm expecting, you know, these huge glass cases all over the wall and something that's as big as Walmart or something. And we walk in there, and it's a you know big closet full of cases. And it surprised me as a kid. I was like, ah, what is this? But uh, long story short, you know, he, uh, he ended up gifting me this, and uh, it's been my number, my number one go-to since. So. And I, I primarily stick with Gibsons, you know, since I, I started here, I pretty much live here. You know, nothing wrong with Fender. It's just uh, it didn't really fit my hands very good, I guess. Totally. But I do own a Fender or two at home. I got a telly with me here just to kind of show. But yeah, yeah, I mean, uh, going between the, the Gibson and the Fender scale in one set can sometimes throw you off a little bit. I know it yeah, does Yeah, for sure. Well, for have, sure. You mo have you modded this at all? Have changed the pickups, or is this um, stock? No, he had a Jeff Beck in the front and a uh, DiMarzio, DiMarzio Super Distortion in the back. And it's, uh, it's, I've have kept it the same way since then. So I'm pretty sure he did that. Uh, I'm not sure when those pickups came out, but I know they were at some point you know, in the 90s, I believe, and I've, I've kept it the same. And actually, since we've been off the road for, you know, a year and a month, we just had our first show back last week, but since we've been off, uh, I lost a cap, a capacitor went out, so in my back pickup, so I'm kind of, kind of dudding out on this guy. I need to do some work on it. Oh, man, oh, man. Well, yeah. hell, um, I know, you know, you, you, you're playing a ton of slide, and um, yeah. sometimes people will set up their guitar with a little bit higher action for slide. Are mm -hmm. you playing slide just on like certain guitars or that one or are you bouncing back and forth or what i've always you know whenever i was younger you know in in order for me to get into the albums and really shine in certain parts i just ended up saying screw it you know i'll play the slide so i kind of taught myself how to play it and you know like you said i'm I fake it till you make it man i'm <laughs> uh, i'm no professional slide player i just uh you know practice my parts good enough to get them on the record i guess and then uh just play them live as good as i can <laughs> But yeah, usually I don't, I'm, I'm really bad about not changing action on guitars, so I beat up the frets pretty bad, and eventually I have to change out some frets, but uh, you know, it's rock and roll. <laughs> yeah, for yeah. sure, for sure. All right, well, that's a really killer guitar. Um, what, you, would, what would be your backup, you know? Um, you know, I run, let's see, 
I usually take four or five on stage with me, but usually I'll go to this 2011 Gibson Les Paul Custom. And uh, the story I got is that it's either one of 100 or one or 300 whenever Gibson got raided for some stuff. Oh. I'm not, I'm not, not 100% sure, but I know there's not very many of them out there with the maple neck and everything. Is that because of the tone wood that was used to make it? Yeah, I, I'm not really sure on the maple. You know, I know they did the maples back in the 70s a little bit, and then you, know, you don't see too many of them since then. So I guess in the 2011, somewhere around there, they made a couple hundred of these, and I happened to see one, and it was like, ah, well, I gotta have that. It's pretty unique, yeah. yeah. How'd you come to own that bad boy? Um, a friend of ours that we've known since we were back in a suburban, man. We started in 2008. His name's Raymond Parrott. We call him Rain Man. But uh, he used to fill up our Suburban with gas. Like, he used to get us show to show. He came to shows all the time. And he's like, ah, y'all are going to be huge, you know. He loved our music. He's really, a really good dude. And uh, eventually he started, he bought me, myself, Cody, and Cody some guitars. And this is the one he bought me, and I've had it ever since then. Yo, that's a good buddy. <laughs> yeah, for sure, man. For sure. And uh, a couple of the guitars that he bought, Cody and Cody, actually got stolen out oh. of the trailer at a Chili's one time. Terrible event. But, you know, he, he's, he was really great, and uh, he actually bought me a really special guitar, so I'm sure. forever thankful for that. Man, I've noticed, um, you know, Les Pauls can kind of vary between, you know, from Les Paul to Les Paul tonally quite a bit, especially considering, you know, that one's got, you know, some maple that might have, you know, been yeah. a, a different situation. What, what do you notice about this one in particular that's maybe different than the, the last one? Uh, you know, the customs, you know, they, they play a little different. The, the other one's a standard, and I'm used uh. to standards, and, you know, everybody's hands are so different, you mm -hmm. know. So little, I, I don't have very huge hands, so whenever it comes to, like, ES guitars, I like the, the 35s and, you know, anything that's smaller down there. So the customs get, a, you know, a little bit wider and a little sharper, but uh, it's basically the same package. What pickups came in that? Do you know? Um, I think it's just the the normal. Uh, oh man, if you want to ask me, the uh, what was it 390T humbuckers or the uh, it's the classic humbuckers. The, the stock one, know. yeah. Yeah, pretty much the stock. Right I never on. changed it. I just kind of kept it that way, and only toured with it for a, a you know a year or so. And I was like, man, I should probably once I learned what I think I learned about the guitar, I kind of took it off the road and took it home. And I was like, I should probably stop banging this up against the wall all the time. Yeah. But it's meant to be played, you know. I, I don't believe in casing them. I, th I think you should play them. So I, I played at home all the time. Yeah. Plus, you got a nice, you got a nice guitar rack back there. That looks pretty safe. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> safe as it can be. <laughs> right on. Yeah. So what, um, what strings or engages are you running before I forget to ask? I run 11s, Ernie Ball 11s. Oh. Uh-huh. I stay up there pretty high. And, um, you know, after about 20 shows in a row. It starts to hurt a little bit, but yeah, I was gonna say that's pretty meaty strings. Yeah, it's what we, it's what I started on when I was younger and just stuck there. That yeah. makes sense. Yeah. All right, what do you got next for guitars? Let's see what we got. I guess we'll just go down the line, huh? Sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is a ES three thirty nine. You know, I got in involved with Gibson, and they were generous enough to uh, provide me with one whenever I needed it at the time, and. They've kind of just let me hang on to this guy since then. Now, if, uh, uh, if I'm not mistaken, the 339 is just a little bit smaller of a body than like a 335 or something, right? Basically. Yeah, gotcha. basically. And I'm a tall dude, so I probably need the bigger version. But uh, it's always been cool. It's cool to bring up whenever we play different songs that need a little bit, you know, a different flavor, a different sound. I usually just wing it on my guitars and just pick up whatever's feeling good at the time. But this is a good one to uh, just throw in the mix for no reason at all. Yeah. yeah, I love those, uh, you know, 335s and 339s. Do you ever have issues with it feeding back or anything like that? Because it, you know, it looks like you got a pretty loud rig behind you. Yeah, it, if you, you know, if you crank up too much, it's it's gonna talk back to you. That's when you gotta <laughs> tame the beast. You gotta tell her to calm down. Yeah, man. It's got a, you know, a voice yeah. to it. It definitely does that, that uh, semi-hollow thing. I dig it, for sure. It does. It does, man. 
Yeah. Oh, have you yeah. modified this at all, or is this stock? No, not at all. Yeah, straight, just like I got it, and left it alone. You know, I was always a guy that, you know, with pedals and everything else, I was always a fan of uh, plugging straight into the amp. And if I can't sound okay through the amp, then I, I really, I know I'm kind of reverting to pedals. But I was like, I, I shouldn't need that, you know, to make me sound better until I figure out what's going on here. Gotcha. So, yeah, you totally. know, and it sounded, the point of the story is that, you know, this guitar as well as the other one sounded pretty good going through my amp. So I didn't mess with anything and I just left it alone, you know. Sure, that's a pretty good litmus test for what's going to be a good guitar. Plug right. right into your amp and if it sounds like you, then it's, it, you know. There you go, yeah. for sure. I primarily do uh, slide on this guitar. This is a 2004 Les Paul Jr. Why do you prefer to play slide on that guitar? Is it because most juniors have a P90 or something, right? I can't really P90, tell. Yeah. Okay, yeah, gotcha. Yeah, P90s for sure. Do you feel um, like it's just a better pickup for slide or? No, not at all. I bought the guitar and I needed to find a spot to play it. And, uh, <laughs> and, and I needed open tuning for certain songs. And at the time that slot needed to be filled and this is the one who grabbed it. And that it kind of stuck since then. So this one stays in a Model G or Modal, however you want to call it. So it's gotcha. got a, uh, yeah. So uh, we do uh, a couple of songs in Modal or Model, however everybody seems to say it different. But mm -hmm. this one just stays there, and that's the spot that uh, it chose itself to play. So that's where it lives. Makes sense. Now, yeah, man. W when you're playing slide, are, are you typically... In that tuning? No, I typically stay in standard tuning for a lot of the slide work. Gotcha. But on those particular songs, like Home and uh, On the River, which I, I wrote and co-wrote both of them, they landed in this tuning. So, you know, this guitar plays on those tunings for the most part. Um, Frogman's another song that we do in an open G. So this will go down from Model G to open G and back and forth. But, oh, okay. Yeah, so the songs that have been written that way in that tuning, that's pretty... Uh, Pretty much, yeah. That makes sense, for sure. Pretty it. That's yeah. a new, new term. Yeah, man, I gotta get hip to those P90s. I've never owned a P90 guitar, and I've, so many players, especially lately, it seems like they've really gained a lot of popularity in the past couple of years, you know? Yeah, yeah, I've, I've heard, you know, it has evidently, I don't keep up with, you know, the guitar market too much, but evidently it's become pretty popular the past couple of years. Yeah. I just always wanted one since I was a kid. I thought they were cool. You know, yeah, they I had a, so uh, cool. yeah, yeah. I always thought it was the coolest guitar in the world, and I've always wanted one. And it fi kind of fell into my lap, and I was like, "Well, it's it's got to go home. It's got to come with me." <laughs> yeah, it'll find its way somewhere. It'll have a meaning somewhere. You know, yeah. just let it do its thing. For yeah. sure. All right, what uh, what's up next? Okay. Oh, sweet. Yeah, this is a. I think it's a 91, 92, 92. 60, 1967 reissue. Reissue, yeah. That's yeah, and cool. they didn't do, they only did, they only did a hundred of these whenever I figured out. A hundred of these 67 reissues. Where am I at? Oh, I'm plugged into this. My wireless, man. Gets me every time. Um, yeah, they only did a hundred of these guys with the bigger, in 67 they had the bigger, the bigger pick guards, you know. Uh -huh. But I always wanted a 61, an original 61. And one of these days I'll get one, but this kind of fell into my lap too and I had to had to come with it man I love an SG I've I've I've, I've owned a couple and I got a weird question for you um yeah. a lot of the SGs that I've owned seem to kind of neck dive if you let go of it with the three pickups does that help balance balance it out you think I don't know it's a good question man I've heard people say that I don't know but the neck will definitely dive and and this strap has helped me you know I used to put like some moon gels and some other stuff down here so it doesn't you know, completely fall down. But the neck is heavier, you know. It, it, it's, and I've got a thing in the center of my back that kind of keeps it stationary better for me, too. Ah, good trick. Yeah, but it definitely does dive. Yeah, know? oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the moon gels wore off, but the, uh, the residue's still there. <laughs> right on. Now, yeah. with, with, uh, with the tonal variety that you get from three pickups, where are you living usually? Are you... Usually on the neck. Really? I tend to live on the neck a whole lot. You know, most guys typically on the bridge, but uh, I, I kind of changed my amp to live on the, on the neck pickup for sure. Ah, that, that makes yeah. sense. And I've noticed mm -hmm. that you play quite a bit with your hands without a pick sometimes, especially when you're playing slide. So for sure. Totally. Yeah, that I, makes I, sense. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I land, you know, like I said, I kind of taught myself how to play slide and uh, Dave Cobb in studio, he kind of, a producer on a couple of records of ours, he kind of helped me, you know, he kind of, uh, 
he would tape up some of the strings sometimes to try to teach me. He was like, nah, dude, you're playing slide. I was like, man, let's just get somebody to play it that knows what they're doing, you know? He's like, no, we're doing it if it takes all night. So he, he kind of helped a lot, you know, I'm still faking it till I make it, but um, sometimes I do pick, you know, pick with slide. Sometimes I just uh, pick in fingers. Sometimes I'm just doing fingers, you know? So. Come on, man. Yeah, it just, it just depends on what songs and what's going on. Totally. Man, what a no. beautiful guitar. Oh, thank you, man. Yeah, I thank love you. that pick guard. I, that you, I guess I never noticed that the pick guard was different because of the three pickups when the, and yeah. there's reissues. Yeah, on, on the 67s, the originals, they're just a little bit bigger. I never noticed it either until I really dug into it. But yeah, this one's still got some blood all over it from, I guess, the last <laughs> show we played with. It, but. <laughs> little cuticle blood all over it, huh? <laughs> yeah, a tad bit of cuticle. Those are basically the guys that I kind of live with and tour with. You know, yeah. I, don't, I don't keep the blonde... Uh, on the road too much but that's kind of my 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 arm my yeah. coat of arms so, there so I, just out of curiosity I, I saw on your instagram a while back that you had posted um this badass fano that was kind of like a t-style almost yeah yeah Did it was one of the earlier and at the last minute i almost brought that with me and at the last minute i was like you know i don't know if anybody cares but i was trying to pick and decide who I should come and try to keep with who lives, you know, on the road with me most. And I just grabbed whatever was sitting there. Actually, my uh, Cody Simpson, my, my buddy, was trying to convince me to bring it. Um, it's funny you ask about it. Yeah, man, that, that Fano is cool as shit, dude. I played slide on it. It stayed in uh, Model G for a long time. And it's, oh, yeah. They're killer guitars, man. It's an earlier, I think it's a set neck. I don't think it's a bolt-on. Um, psh, psh, psh. I hope I'm right about that. Yeah. But, it, but the, the work on them was was pretty, you know, pretty class act. It was pretty good. Oh, for sure. Yeah, those early yeah. early fanos especially were just so cool. Not to take anything away from the guitar collection you have, because you have oh, quite an you. arsenal. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you know? Thank you, man. Yeah, yeah. The, you know, there's something to be said about them. <laughs> there's a reason why they've gained popularity. It's not because they're terrible guitars, you know. <laughs> yeah. For sure. Well, hey, uh, I know that you're a Vox guy. Oh, yeah. And that's like a pretty big part of your tone. You're a, you're a, you know, a, a Vox endorsee. Um, yeah. so tell me about these behind you. Um, so for those of you watching at home, we're on Zoom right now. So I can't, <clears throat> I don't have the most clear uh, picture of what's going on there. But we'll get you guys pictures and all that fun stuff. But it looks yeah. like you got like almost two, two full stacks of Vox I, stuff going on. I do, man. Yeah, yeah. Vox is, uh, once we got on board together, they've always been really good, Tom you know in artist relations that was been really good to me and he, you know he's taking care of me whenever i've needed something and vice versa but yeah i run these uh the fawn ac30s with double cabs so i'm running uh blue alnicos you know just like uh two of them came my original my original one fell out of the back of a u-haul one time while we were in colorado and it got busted by a taxi cab and he uh <laughs> He came back and tried to sue us for a lot of money. I was going to yeah. say, I'm sure it messed up the cab pretty good, too. Oh, it did. It barely did at his door. But he, once he figured out who we were, he definitely tried to sue us. But hey, Jesus. if you're out there, man, uh, sorry, it didn't work out. Uh, but uh, after that, you know, I ended up going back and getting another, another head and another cab. And then, you know, we got on board with each other. And now I kind of primarily out of the left side, I keep my rhythm. And, you know, uh, we're running a... Uh, Sennheiser MK, MK4 over here on this guy. And then a lot of the times I switch back and forth between uh, my little volume pedals and I'll crank up for a lead tone out of another one. So right now we're, we're kind of blended between both so we're not set up that way. But live on stage I'll, I'll, I'll run one, you know, one side for lead and the other side for straight rhythm. That's a fun trick. I bet that sounds huge. Um, yeah, it is yeah. kind of cool. Yeah. It, are, it was, are, are, do you have one, a... A, a B switch, or are you just doing it with a volume pedal? No, just straight two volumes. You know, whenever we look at it later on, you'll be able to tell. So I'll, I'll keep one volume shut off at all times, and then I'll switch them over, or I can blend both of them at the same time. So I can blend a rhythm and that, you know, just depending on what he wants to throw out front, and he can throw them both together if he wants to, or however he wants to do it in separate channels. Yeah, I'm sure your front of house guy loves that. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. yeah. For sure. It was actually his idea. So oh, I was bad. like, all right, man, if you, if you, you know, if you're going that direction, then you know, you're going to have to wrestle the beast yeah. whenever it gets there, so. Man, um, of all the 
killer amps there are in the world. What is it about the AC30s that you like? Dude, I, it's the first time I plugged into it, you know, I, I had looked up to a guy that, that had them for a while whenever I was a kid, and I could never afford them. And the first time I plugged into it, we ended up saving up band money to be able to get me one. You know, the guys saved up, and we, the band bought it for me. I, it's just, you know, the high end, it's, it's just a tonality. It's, it's one of a kind. The, the British tone that comes with it. Uh, just for me with Les Paul's band, there's no other direction you can possibly go. Just for me. Yeah. So yeah. The, t the, the two on top there are heads, and you're just powering extension cabs? Yes, sir. Gotcha, sure. gotcha. Yeah, two, uh, you see the 230 heads powering both cabs. Plus, it looks cool as shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it looks a little aggressive. They usually sit together, you know, so there's, they're all just looking like a monster behind me. Sometimes I got to get on my tippy toes to change some, <laughs> change some tone in it and look like an idiot. But uh, sometimes it, it could be a little aggressive, you know, if we play, we don't do too many club shows anymore, but if we're in a club show for a reason, I got to kind of calm it down a little bit, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, like, especially now, because so many people are using, like, modeling amplifiers and cab sims and stuff like that, you'll see a giant stage with kind of yeah. nothing on it and it almost looks weird, you know? Uh, yeah, for sure, <laughs> for sure. Either that or it's a tiny stage and it's got way too much stuff on it. Yeah, yeah, like, it's like one of the dude, four full it's a hard one. Yeah, it's like, come on, man, calm it down. Right on. Well, all right. So beyond, you know, your arsenal of rad guitars and those uh, AC30s, how dependent, yeah. how, how much do you depend on pedals? Because I know a lot of slide guys like really need compression to kind of help smooth that stuff out. Are you a compression yeah. guy or like what's your... I'm not. I'm, no? I'm not one. I've never used one and I, I still don't want, I don't use one. I'm sure my sound guy's not a, not a happy camper, like that. <laughs> but uh, he's always trying to get me to go back that way. But no, I've never used them. You know, it, the thing of our whole band and us is we, we were just a bunch of kids when we started out. We played ball, like we played baseball and football. You know, we grew up in sports and a bunch of us knew each other when we were kids. So we didn't grow up, you know, extreme musicians you know, the super talented guys that, that sat in the room and really learned stuff, you know? So we didn't grow up in that world until we got later on in high school and then we started figuring out stuff. And you know, my dad started teaching us how to play. And then, so like, I didn't grow up with compression or knowing, the first time I ever plugged in, I was like, I just don't, I don't get it. I don't understand what it is. So I had taught myself without it. And, you know, I just, uh, that's where it's lived for 13 years since we've been touring, you know. I yeah. just don't do it. You know, in studio, of course, you, we got a dabble, a little yeah. dabble do in there. But uh, live, we just don't, we just don't, do none of us do it. Well, that's a pretty interesting, especially considering, you, you know, you're playing slide on a neck pickup with an AC-30. Yeah. Like. yeah, it's definitely not the right thing to do, but it's, like I said, it's just how we learn. It's where we are. Yeah. So w what pedals are you running? Like, do you have any things that you just couldn't play a show without? Or Yeah, yeah, I've got a couple. I play with a uh, Hermita Reverb. They were a company based out of mm -hmm. Austin. So I do run some reverb because these, these cabs don't have it, uh, of yeah. course. I run a, uh, I run a Union tube transistor so I, it's basically it's called a more pedal so it just uh it just gives me more of what i got so it's basically just a boost basically it's yeah. just a boost it, yeah uh, so i i use it for all of my leads and all my stuff so i probably couldn't live without that and my uh my scratty i've got an echo over here i got from actually bones owens uh i use it as a slap back that you can probably hear already so i kind of Without those, but I don't, ha I don't have anything crazy, man. A little reverb, a little boost, a little slap back, and that's where I live. Right on. That's a pretty straightforward yeah. setup as far as pretty pedal straightforward. goes. Yeah. yeah, and I use a wah-wah, you know, but nothing else, nothing crazy. Gotcha. What wah are you on? I'm using a, right now, I've, it changes about every year. I use another one, they break <laughs> down so quick. Right now, I'm using a slash, one of slashes. Man, those are so actually it, really great. I love those. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, it's, it's stuck around the longest. I think I've had this for two or three years. So it's, it's stuck around. The rest of them are about one a year going yeah. down. I feel yeah, like but I'm, I'm moving, transitioning back towards Vox. You know, I'm, I'm getting back on board there. Right on. Well, I think that pretty much covers all your gear. Um, yeah, I know y'all you, just had a record come out September of 2019. Um, we did. And you're in the studio right now making a record, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. We, we had a record, a self-titled record in 2019. And we just got out of studio. And uh, we're looking to, we got a couple more 
small overdubs to do. We've got a couple of horns and some stuff, but uh, we're looking to come out in early fall, somewhere around there. Yeah, cool. no official date yet, but it's coming. It's on the way. We're excited, man. We, uh, we produced, self-produced the last record, and we decided to uh, go ahead and do it again, so we'll see. Right on. Well, that should kind of line up perfectly with uh, a fall touring schedule because it kind of seems like that's where everybody's planned yeah, man, it's, yeah, every, the, the stars are aligning a little bit. So hopefully, it, it just like you said, it works out perfect, and we start touring. You know, we may have some uh, some late summer. You know, we're getting we're dabbling around in it, so it looks like it's going to start up kind of on time. We can start cool. releasing singles and you know start showing everybody what we got. Well, hell yeah, man, John, it's been yeah, great man. talking to you. Um, congrats on the Yellowstone songs. Like, I'm sure that did a lot for y'all. Thank you, thank you, man. Yeah, yeah, we were. You know, that was a uh, it took off it just kept us on the same platform we were moving on anyway so it, it definitely helped us for sure very handy well yeah. I, I look forward to checking out the new record when it's done um if you guys um are listening at home then make sure to check that out uh this fall uh yeah. look out for whiskey myers on tour hopefully this fall sure. as well yeah yeah all around the nation uh you know we we tour in, uh, internationally a lot so i mean we don't stick in one place too long usually we do, we tend to uh our booking agent has a good map now, so uh, <laughs> we make good good circles instead of shitty circles. <laughs> well, hell yeah, man. It was a pleasure talking to you. Thanks, you guys, for watching. Um, stay tuned for more rig rundowns, riff rundowns, video lessons, gear reviews, all that fun stuff to satiate your guitar nerdery. Uh, we'll see you guys soon. Thank you, man.